Welcome back to another edition of USCFootball.com's Film Study. I'm your host, Shotgun Spratling, and this week we're taking a look at what happened in USC's 31-16 loss at Arizona State, including why the Sun Devils got their run game going and USC couldn't. As a reminder, we've recently opened up our Film Study series to non-VIP members of USCFootball.com on our YouTube channel, but only VIP members get access to the videos the week following each game. So if you want the latest breakdowns without a delay, make sure you subscribe at USCFootball.com and become a member of the Peristyle, the largest community of USC fans on the internet. This week, we're going to start with the defense, and we'll start with Arizona State's first play from scrimmage, where we're going to get an action that they will use throughout the night. On this play, the Sun Devils actually have an extra offensive lineman down here lined up as a tight end, so they can get some extra, a complete overload, actually, because they're going to pull these two backside linemen. This is something they did throughout the night. They're going to pull these two weak side linemen, try to get them over here with the extra three to four linemen on this side, create a giant hole, try to get a big, big run just to start the game out. But Drake Jackson's going to play this perfectly. We're going to see him up here at 99. He's going to read these two offensive linemen pulling. And as soon as he sees this motion to come down, he's going to scream right off the hip. Stay on that hip. Go straight down the line and be able to get to the, the running back because he's going to be patient. He's going to be waiting on those blocks. Uh, Drake Jackson doesn't get the tackle for loss right here. But because of the penetration he has, Greg Johnson's able to get up there and create the tackle at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the first, on first play. But we'll see this action over and over throughout the night from Arizona State and it ends up being something that gives USC struggles at the very end of the game. USC's defense did some nice things throughout the night. It was just overshadowed by the explosive plays they gave up. Uh, one of those nice plays they had was this first third down. They're going to force a three and out for Arizona State. You're going to see USC. They're going to show an overload blitz on this side. They're going to bring pressure off this. So Arizona State, to counter it, they're going to think, all right, well, let's run a wide receiver screen to the other side. We'll get out. We'll get some space, and they won't be able to get anybody over to make the play. But Raymond Scott's going to make a beautiful play on this. You're going to see him here at the snap of the ball. He's taking off, and his coverage zone is this area right here. But as he's running across, he's not just straight running to his area area and not not looking at the play at all he's seeing what's happening on this play he sees the action of the wide receiver here and reads it perfectly and he takes a peek back right there to see what Jaden Daniels is doing sees he's throwing that screen and he gets in perfect position look at him set up he, he evens his shoulders up squares his shoulders up squares his hips up goes and makes the tackle on third and seven USC gets off the field on their first third down it's always fun to watch guys improve, and you know Max Gibbs is a guy who got switched over to the defensive side, so it's been really interesting to see his progression so far this season. But just showing off his pure strength here, we see him right here. He's actually going to be a little bit slow to uh, to adjust to this when they have the motion. He's going to move over a little bit late. Not going to get a great start off the ball, but watch what he does once he gets moving. He's going to go man to man here against the the left guard and just going to stand him straight up. Doesn't have great leverage here, but look at the strength strength here and does exactly what you want him to do throws the lineman out of the way and goes to try to make a play he gets bear hugged on this play you see the arms around and because of that he's not able to make the tackle on this one but it's been fun to see Max Gibbs progress we saw him get his first tackle for loss in this game he just continues to make strides week after week and it's really fun to to check him out and see what he's been able to do this season but Arizona State's going to score on the very next play. We're going to see they're going to pull two linemen, something they did all night. This time it's going to be the center and the right tackle. And when when you see these pulling linemen, you got to have someone shoot the gaps. you got to get some penetration. You can't have guys just sitting back, catching, and uh, waiting for the blocks to get to them, which is what happens on this. No one gets any penetration. On the outside, Chase Williams is kind of waiting for the block to come to him. And because of that, he's trying to read this. He's trying to make sure that he keeps the outside edge. But because of that, he doesn't get any penetration. And you see that Rashad White's actually able to double team on Raylan Goforth and then still get outside to, to Chase Williams. Now, Kanai Mauga has a little bit of a chance here. He dives, tries to get through the traffic and make the play, but train him just a very patient run once again. He's going to get through there, and because Kanai Mauga can't make the tackle, train him's got the, the clear line of sight for the end zone. He's going to get in. Chase uh, Greg Johnson's going to get a little hit on him, but not enough to, to keep him out of the end zone, and Arizona State gets on the board first. USC was able to create three turnovers on the night, including this terrific play from Tuli Tuli Pelotu. You're going to see Max Gibbs actually going to get some penetration, has a chance for a tackle for loss, can't get him down on the ground. But watch Tuli Tuli Pelotu. Has a guy dive at his legs, try to cut block him, misses that. He gets inside of this guy. Two guys trying to block him, neither one of them can. He puts the right arm around to start to bring the tackle, but then punches with the left and just a perfect delivery here on the football. And then the mayhem starts. You have Hunter Eccles. He has his first opportunity. 
Nope, not happening. How about Chris Steele? You're going you're gonna to be able to field this one? Nope, that ball, ball bounces away. Chase Williams, Kanai Malga, Kalen Bullock. Everyone's jumping in. Raylan Goforth is going to end up uh, being able to get the ball. He's in the pile as well. Now you got Chris Thompson coming in and burrowing in at one point. You, you got Max Gibbs is about to jump on top of this pile. I mean, look at this big boy. You know, whoever's on the bottom of this pile is not happy about that. But then you also have Stanley Taufu come over here and just delivers a butt punch. You know, right into the butt of the uh, the Arizona State offensive lineman here for whatever reason. Then you got Chris Thompson is going to jump in. He's going to start burrowing in. Basically, every single Trojan on the field has a chance to this football or gets in the middle of this pile, except for Isaac Taylor Stewart. He was on the opposite side of the field. He's the only one. You got 10 other guys all fighting for this football. Raylan Goforth is going to come away with it, and USC is going to get their first turnover over the game. USC scores and takes the lead, but then immediately gives the momentum back to Arizona State with two back-to-back plays here. Just a quick screen pass out to a Rashard White, and then he's just going to break tackles, break tackles. No one wants to tackle him. Break tackles. Break. Try to strip it. Nope. Spin away. Try to strip it again. Nope. And just continues to run. I think it was a 26-yard play right here. But then Arizona State's going to hurry up to the line. We're going to fast forward real quick here. They're going to hurry up, get up here, and USC is completely out-leveraged on this play. Now, what I mean by that is look at where the center is right here and look at where all USC's back seven defenders are. You've got a cornerback up here, and you've got one linebacker that's directly uh, head up with the the center your safety is head up with the center so at most you have two back three back end defenders here on the on the left side of USC's defense the right side of the formation for Arizona State you see multiple guys are still kind of trotting over here while Arizona State is snapping the ball and because of that they completely out leverage USC they get outside and it takes only one miss for uh, Rashad White to you know turn up and be off to the races. And you're going to see that right here in the hole. He puts his foot in the ground and makes Chase Williams miss. And because Kalen Bullock is actually jogging over here, not hustling to the play initially, he get, he's going to catch up with Rashad White because he's got the speed. However, once he gets to him, it's at the five-yard line, and he spins him into the end zone, where if he would have been running sprinting to the other side of the field, which is probably why he's slapping himself in the helmet right there, maybe he gets there at the 10, and maybe USC stops them from scoring. Maybe they force a field goal uh, inside the red zone. But USC, this all started from not tackling the play before and not being ready to go once the ball was snapped uh, with ASU hustling to the line to, to attack USC on the backside of that play. USC has struggled to get consistent pressure this season. Besides sacks and TFLs, what it can also do is create turnovers. And we'll see that on this play right here. You have Greg Johnson blitzing off the edge. The tackle's going to go out to him. Kanai Malga's following inside. This guy goes back inside for some reason. But watch Jaden Daniels. He senses this pressure is coming. He's actually going to take a hitch in his throw before he gets rid of it. And because of that, he, he's trying to get rid of the ball, knowing the pressure is he's about to get hit. And he throws it high. Zavian Alford's all there by him himself is able to catch this one and USC gets their first interception of the night their second turnover but it all starts with the pressure and Jaden Daniels feeling Kanai Malga coming from his backside as he's about to get rid of the ball Jumping forward to the fourth quarter, this is a similar play as the 50-yard touchdown that will actually happen on the next play. But on this play, we're going to see how USC defends it well, and then we can compare it to what they do on the next play. On this play, you're going to see that Arizona State's actually going to bring a, a wide receiver in, and then he's actually going to try to block Drake Jackson, which is just a terrible idea from Arizona State. But they're going to, again, take two linemen. Both these the weak side linemen here are going to pull to the right side. They're going to try to get that advantage on there. But they can't do that because, one, Drake Jackson's going to shove this receiver out of the way and come screaming down the line just like he did early in the game, but also on the other side. Jacob Lichtenstein is going to get some a penetration here. Instead of waiting and seeing what the play is to come into him, he gets some penetration, and now you see the running back is having to make a move in the backfield, three yards in the backfield, and because of that, that gives the other defenders more time to get to the ball. Drake Jackson coming straight down the line. He's able to make the tackle right here. He and Lichtenstein combine, and it's a one-yard gain. That's exactly how you want to play it. Now let's take a look at what happens on the next play. 
this time, second and nine. USC's bringing pressure. You're going to see Greg Johnson blitzing, Kanai Malga blitzing, but the lineman takes off and USC gets no penetration. Jacob Lichtenstein's not coming down the line hard enough and he can't get there. Maybe it's because it's late in the game. He's a little bit tired. He's played a ton of snaps, but also on the other side, last time we saw Lichtenstein getting some penetration upfield. Right here, you've got Drake Jackson. He's just kind of holding the edge. He's waiting and he's kind of catching. He's waiting to see what happens. He's, you know, catching the, the block and then let me see if I can get off of it and go make a play. He can't make the play here. He tries to make the tackle in the hole, misses, whiffs on it. But then the big one, Chase Williams as the last defender, he's got to make this play. He's got to make the stop. Give up a 10, 15-yard game, but you can't give up the 50-yard touchdown, which is what Rashad White's going to get here. No one's going to catch him. He you know, weaves around so Kalen Bullock can't get him. And because of that, Arizona State takes an eight-point lead, which just proved to be insurmountable for USC with the way their offense was going in the second half. The final play we're going to look at on the defensive side is a third and three with four minutes and ten seconds left. USC's down by eight. Even if they give up the field goal, if they can hold them to a field goal attempt, maybe they miss it. But even if they make it four minutes left, you got a chance to come back and, and get two scores. But, you know, Arizona State's going to continue driving on this, going to be able to punch it in at the end. They're going to pick up three third and shorts on this drive because it seemed like the USC defense, just without a juice, had no life, had no energy, and you can see it on this play. You're going to have everyone kind of doing their job, but no one actually getting off blocks. You're going to see Kanai Malga is going to get locked up. The only guy that comes free is Chris Thompson because they leave him unblocked. They get him to hesitate a little bit with this motion here. But you see Tulutu Pelotu, he gets, you know, the, the offensive lineman is going to do a good job turning and sealing him all from this to create this little bit of crevice. You're going to see Stanley Taufu is getting pushed a couple yards down the field. You're going to see the linebackers you know, get blocked here, the safety get blocked here. It's not like there's a huge hole for him to run through, but everyone's just kind of pushing their man. No one's actually coming off that block to make the big play, to make the big stop here. And because of that, you know, Rashad White isn't going to have a huge hole to run through, but he's going to continue to be able to push the pile, push the pile. He's going to keep those legs turning. No one's actually coming to make the tackle. Everyone's just trying to kind of stand around trying to push the pile into him rather than coming off grabbing him and throwing him down on the ground and because of that they're going to get four yards right here and like I said they're going to have another third and one they're going to pick that up they're going to score Rashad White gets his third touchdown of the game and that's just the dagger in the USC heart Let's switch over to the offensive side for USC. The first play we're going to look at is on the opening drive. Fourth and three, USC has moved it into Arizona State territory. Chance to take an early lead. They've got an opportunity here. You're going to go with a four-wide set for Keaton Slovis. You've got a tight end up here in Lake McCree, I believe. And then you're going to have Taj Washington at the top. That's going to be the target that Keaton Slovis looks for. But by looking at these linebackers and where they're playing, how tight they're playing in the middle of the field, knowing that Gary Bryant is going to be running a slant route right here, if Gary Bryant Bryant can can tell can relay to Keaton Slovis that this nickelback is playing outside of him the outside shade here or if, if Slovis can see it himself then this should be an easy pitch and catch on the slant route because of the where Darian Butler the linebacker is playing because he's so far inside there's a, a big gap right here and we'll see it when we pl play the play uh, you're going to see that Gary Bryant's going to be open but uh, Keaton Slovis is actually looking on the, to the right side, right to left progression. He's going to be looking for Taj Washington first. And now there's going to be a little, a small hole in the zone here. Taj Washington is going to sit down. And you see there's a little window here. And because this, this cornerback takes one step with his left foot outside, this is when Keaton Slovis has got to try to throw it in the window to the outside here to try to get it away from the middle linebacker because he's more dangerous threat on this particular play uh, with where he is stationed compared to where the cornerback is. Because he doesn't throw it far enough outside, the linebacker is able to come across and able to make the play here. And Taj Washington, maybe he can take a step forward and try to catch this ball as well with a little bit of forward momentum. I know he's sitting down in the zone, but you, you got to try to go after the ball knowing that there's a defender near. you gotta have, you got to have a little bit of feel there and if he comes up maybe he you know is able to make that catch you know contested catch instead of it being intercepted regardless USC's drive ends here with an interception wouldn't matter if it's incompletion or interception fourth down but a small some small details there that could have been the difference between getting a first down and handing the ball over to Arizona State let's jump over to USC's run game 
Obviously, USC have been running the ball well with Keontae Ingram the last couple of weeks coming into this game. But without Drake London, teams are going to adjust. They're going to stack the box against USC and try to take away Ingram because he's the next biggest threat after London. And you're going to see that from Arizona State. This is something they did all night. You're going to see USC only has five offensive linemen here. They split out two of the, the tight ends. Uh, they're going to face seven in the box, though. you got four down linemen, two linebackers here, another middle linebacker about seven yards off. And because of that, that means there's two unblocked defenders here you know what what is Keontae Ingram going to do when there's going to be two guys that can get to him even though everyone's going to be getting a block here initially we're going to see the one guy they're going to leave unblocked is going to be this defensive end they're going to let him go Keontae Ingram's going to make that guy miss actually initially but look USC's getting a block here block here block here block here and block here but there's still two guys the one guy that Keontae Ingram is making miss now and now a secondary defender that's coming up in the box to keep him from going anywhere so once USC even though they're making these initial blocks he's had taken time to make this guy miss and then if one guy comes off a block like happens here with Brett Nealon he's not holding that block and because of that that's going to be the guy that's able to make the tackle because Ingram's trying to make this guy miss there's not a ton of a ton of room to run and now the secondary defender gets there because of you know the extra numbers in the box that Arizona State has you know usually when someone doesn't hold a block and a guy gets free okay well that's the guy Ke- Keontae Ingram can make miss but when there's already an unblocked guy to begin with now he's trying to make two guys miss early in the play and because of that you get a tackle tackle at the line of scrimmage like this play right here there were also times when the run game didn't work because USC's offensive linemen just got out physical. You're going to see that on this play right here. USC's in the pistol formation, something they used a couple times on this night. And then you're going to see on the right side here, you got Jalen McKenzie, you got Liam Jimmins. That's a fifth year guy, a sixth year guy. They're going up against a 265 pound defensive end. And yet these two guys trying to get a combo block right here get pushed backwards. They don't get any push on this, and because of that, Keontae Ingram has no room to run through right here, and the unblocked defender is there to tackle him at the line of scrimmage. No gain because those two guys didn't get a push on a combo block. You got to be able, when you're doing a combo block, you got to be able to push that guy back a couple yards and create some space, and they didn't on this play right here. When the Trojans were able to run the ball a little bit, they were able to move it consistently and were able to put points on the board, including this drive, the first one for Jackson Dart. This is the first play of the second quarter. You're going to see they're going to run a read option. They're going to leave this defensive end unblocked. Jackson Dart's going to read him. He can't go screaming down the line to try to get to Keontae Ingram because he's got to be aware of Jackson Dart's legs. You're going to see on the left side, Andrew Voorhees going to do a nice combo block here, help out Justin Dietrich, and then get to the second level. Dietrich isn't going to have a great block here, but he's going to do enough. He's going to seal this wall, wall this off so that Ingram can get around and go inside of Eric Cromenhook. Now, Eric Cromenhook's got a nice block so far here. Now, he, this defender is going to come off of him. Now, Eric Cromenhook, does he give up on the play? No, he continues. He strains to try to get this block, and he gets just enough of this guy right here to create that hole for Keontae Ingram to run through. Now, he's got Andrew Voorhees, Voorhees sealing off this side. You got Liam Jimmins sealing off on the inside as well. And then you got outside, you got your wide receivers. Michael Jackson the third, the freshman is out there blocking. You got Gary Bryant blocking. And now Keontae Ingram has a one-on-one with the safety. And this is 11 yards down the field, 12 yards down the field. He's going to make the first guy miss a lot of times, but is that first guy going to be at the line of scrimmage or is it going to be 10, 11 yards down the field because everyone got their blocks like they did on this play? That Keontae Ingram run worked so well. USC said, let's run it again. Just flip it. Let's run it to the other side. You're going to see Eric Cromenhook coming in motion just like he was in the last play, except here's the difference. Arizona State's going to get penetration. They're not, they're not going to you know, take the same thing that happened. They're going to be able to get out in front of it. You're going to see Liam Jimmins and Jalen McKenzie trying to get that combo block that we saw from the other side and try to get to the second level. That doesn't happen because they don't get this combo block. Now Eric Cromenhook's picking up the linebacker here. Neither one of these guys is getting to the second level to get the other linebacker. And you're going to see there's so many yellow jerseys that are going to be across the line of scrimmage. And because they didn't get that combo block, now you see Liam Jimmins is turning to look for the linebacker. He's already running past him and he's the one that's going to end up making this play that's the difference you know can you give Keontae Ingram a lane a running lane to stick his foot in the ground and get downhill attacking defenders instead of being in the backfield dancing around looking for a hole that was the big difference and this is the same exact play run from one side to the other side 24 yard gain versus a five yard loss We've seen a lot more of Jackson Dart the last two games, and with Keaton Slowis banged up right now, he might be the starter in the next game when USC gets back on the field. 
but he's got to continue to improve each and every outing. You know, that's what you want from a freshman. You're going to see on this play, he's got a good pocket. He has time to look down the field, checks his options, and he's going to get, you know, he's going to feel the pressure a little bit and say, hey, there's some space over here. Let me get out here. But one of the things I'd like to see him do a little bit better is have you know, some, some more before fundamentally sound with his mechanics. On this play right here, he's going to trust his arm just a little bit too much. You see him rolling out. He's going to throw off one leg right here and throw it downfield throws a little bit sidearm and because of that the, the throw is going to sail on him and go over Gary Bryant now what I'd like to see him do on this play is he sees the linebacker he knows how much space he has well when you get right here flip those hips turn and set your hips facing towards the receiver that you're throwing it to and instead of throwing it with your hips you know in in line with the receiver instead of throwing them perpendicular here you get them in line with the receiver get those shoulders square and you can throw a much more accurate ball instead of this you know he's got that patch Mahomes vibe he's going to throw it from different angles but you want to see him working on his mechanics and working on those fundamentals because this ball right here sails it goes a little bit high and Gary Bryant Jr. is not going to be able to catch this ball when it's three yards over or three yards over his head not, a, not give him a chance at all and there's a flag on the play USC picks up a first down but you want to see him continuing to progress in his mechanics and the fundamentals getting used to the game a little bit more knowing when you have time to be able to, to flip your hips and be able to throw a dart versus when you need to throw it off of one leg. What makes Jackson Dart a little different from Keaton Slovis is that he can beat you with his legs as well. We're going to see it on this play. Touchdown, nine-yard run. But from the positioning of the defensive end, you wouldn't think that this would be a great read option where you'd want to keep the ball. Watch the defensive end. He's going to come off. He doesn't come crashing down on the running back. He's setting up. He's reading this play well. But watch just the athleticism of Jackson Dart. Whoop, whoop. Watch this guy. He just has no chance. He waves his hand at him. He, he tries to tell him, hi, bye, see you later. Jackson Dart's got clear running room, and he's going to take it in the end zone with a little bit of flair here, with a little finger roll. You know, get up, show the basketball skills off. Dante Williams not really happy about that after the play, but you like to see the invigorated, the energy that Jackson Dart brings, and you see that from him as he celebrates in the end zone, showing his emotion, and that's something that he brings a little bit different than Keen Slovis as well. One of the things USC struggled with on offense in this game without Drake London was creating separation with the receiving options, whether it be tight ends, running backs, wide receivers. And one of the things I think they can do a little bit more of to help the help out the receivers, help out the tight ends, is use motion. And we see it right here. You can see the defender is right on top of Gary Bryan Jr., ready to defend him, ready to go for that route. But by using this motion, watch where this defender ends up at the end of the, the when the ball is snapped. He's got to go over the top of his his the rest of his teammates he's going to get up end up on top of this and now instead of two or three yards off the line of scrimmage and off of Gary Bryant now he's like eight yards off of Gary Bryant and also this this motion right here this is a coverage indicator by going in motion right here and by the DB following him now Keaton Slovis has a pretty good idea. This is going to be man coverage. And so he's looking at his targets on this play. He's going to look. He's going to find Gary Bryan Jr. He's going to find him on an outbreaking route. Good throw. Puts it on him. And it was a third and six. USC picks up a first down. Moves into Arizona State territory once more right before the half. Going to go try go down, try to score a couple more points before the half ends. And you see a great throw right here by Slovis. Putting him on him outside shoulder. And he's able to get out of bounds as well. Stop the clock. Here's an example of the issue I was just talking about. You're going to see one-on-one -on -one coverage. Keaton Slow is going to do a good job of holding the safety right here with his eyes by looking down the middle of the field. But you're going to see no one's really getting separation. Lake McCree's down here on the bottom. Uh, Taj Washington is, is kind of open, but you know that's going to be a closing on, on him really quick. So Keaton Slovis is looking for Gary Bryant Jr. here at the top of the screen, and you know he throws this ball right up the seam. Gary Bryant Jr. just can't create that separation, and Keaton Slovis can't put the ball on him. That's something the quarterbacks and receivers, you know, someone is going to have to step up and do a little bit more. Just a missed opportunity where you can't get enough separation, or the QB can't put it right where the receiver needs it, because that could have been a touchdown play right there. He had a little bit of a half a step on him. If Slozers can put it on him. One of the things I like to see is potentially some, some post routes and some different things where it gives the quarterback two different directions to throw the ball. So if he underthrows it, the receiver can make an adjustment. And if he throws it you know, more vertically, the receiver can make an adjustment as well. That's something maybe USC can add to their arsenal a little bit more to help them out without having Drake London. 
one last issue USC had in this Arizona State game that they haven't had all season is third and short situations. This is a third and one. USC rushes up to the line, tries to run it. They have a seven-man box. You got six blockers. Someone's going to have to make a play here. You know, need Keontae Ingram to either make someone miss. If they bring everyone into the box, you need guys to make their blocks, though. And that's what happens here. That That's what doesn't happen here. One last issue that plagued the USC offense in this game was third and short situations. They had multiple opportunities where they were not able to pick up first downs, and that's something they've really excelled at this season. This right here is a third and one here in the third quarter. USC is trailing 17 to 10. They got an opportunity in plus territory to go in and try to get a, get a touchdown and even the score up. They're going to have to settle for a field goal because they just don't get the blocks. They rush up to the line. They're seven men in the box. They're going to try to block them with this, these six blockers, five offensive linemen, and Eric Cromenhook, but you're not going to get a good hole on this right side. You're going to combo block with Liam Jimmins. He's going to come inside on the defensive tackle and try to combo block with uh, with Brett Nealon to create a lane right here. But the problem is is that Jalen McKenzie and Eric Cromanhook both get pushed inside. They just get out, you know, outworked, out physical here, and there's no hole for Keontae Ingram to run through. There's supposed to be a hole right in this area to get him up there to get a yard. So Keontae Ingram's going to look at it and say, okay, i got to try to get outside. Darian Butler, though, unblocked. He's going to be able to get past the first guy oftentimes, like I said earlier, but now the the guy the defensive end has come off the block of Eric Cromanhook. He's able to make a play, and because of that, you lose four yards and USC has to settle for a field goal. They came into this game, you know, had, had successfully picked up 25 of 29 when they had been in a third and short situation, third and less than three. But in this game, they really struggled with it, and we saw it on this play right here. The final play we're going to look at is a little bit of a strange play call. It's a third and three. It's either a strange play call or a terrible read by Keaton Slovis. It feels like this is a read option that they would want to run with Jackson Dart. Instead, it, it, it turns into Keaton Slovis trying to, to race for a couple yards and just having nowhere to go. So this is either going to be a read option where Keaton Slovis is reading this defensive end down here, or it's a QB keeper the entire time. Either way, it's a little bit strange to me. We're going to see that USC actually misses this defensive end. You know, you're know, going to see Andrew Voorhees. He's going to go inside and try to get to the linebacker. Well, Jude Wolf also does the same thing, comes out the linebacker. This guy was actually, you saw him put his hands up. He was expecting the block from Jude Wolf to come across, but because he doesn't block him, you see that the, the defensive end is unblocked here, and now suddenly Keaton Slovis has no lane to run through. If they get this block right here and Andrew Voorhees get kicks out the the linebacker you see there should be a little bit of a crease here and you know if the the other secondary defender can't get over the top and if Justin Dietrich holds his block right here this should be a lane for Keaton Slovis to run through so it could work out for them however this doesn't seem like a play that makes much sense to be running with Keaton Slovis versus Jackson Dart and USC again third and three situation that they don't pick up unfortunately for USC so th this is going to be the last play we look at thank you guys so much for for joining us but once again just a strange play call one that didn't seem to work out for usc as you see right here